too. So hopefully that works for you all. Uh, if it doesn't, <laughs> I'm sorry, but uh, this is how the world is these days. Um, but awesome, thank you so much for joining. Um, let's give our people, uh, yeah, one more minute. Can everybody see my screen? Yeah, yes. Good stuff, all right. Very cool, okay, people are trickling in, let's go. Okay, let's get started, why don't we? Um, so, hi, thank you for being here. Uh, I'm very excited to meet every one of you. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask everyone to mute um, your your microphone until you're ready to to ask questions, which I encourage you all to do. We have a small group here, so feel free to ask a lot of questions. Um, so today we're gonna talk about um, building your prof professional designer profile. Um, what are the components of that, right? What are uh, the tips around that? And uh, as well as some of the uh, tips to build your network. Um, I would say that building networks this day is the number one important um, tool to get a new position, right? Uh, to get actually exposure, to be on panels, to do, um, get more opportunities. So, um, it is definitely something that we should do more of, and um, and I can I can share everything that I've learned. Um, so, uh, why am I talking about this? And why, you know, what was my experience, and and where am I coming from? Um, so, a little bit of an intro about myself. Uh, so, my name is Tu. It's very nice to meet you all. Um, I'm a UX uh, design director um, out of New York. I've been um, working in New York for about, I don't know, 12, 12 15 years or something um, in design. And um, yeah, I'm very excited to share uh, with you all today. Um, my journey uh, with, with design, um, have been uh, kind of a wide variety. Um, I've worked a lot with um, agencies, ad advertising agencies in New York specifically. I've worked with a uh, product innovation agency. Um, uh, I made the decision to also went through business school because I wanted to again, you know, build a business profile and, and make sure that I can have the business knowledge to run my own company one day, which is uh, what I'm currently doing. Um, I am, uh, Nadim, I'm going to mute yourself really quickly, right? Um, hope that's okay. Um, I am currently running my own startup. It's been, Taylor Roo has been around for about four years and um, the majority of my time right now is uh, spending on uh, the Taylor Roo Collective, um, which is a, um, a community of researchers and designers working with startups in the humanity space, right? So what does that mean? Uh, we do a lot of work um, in, you know, sustainability, diversity, inclusion, arts, craft, game, health, uh, especially female uh, femme tech, right? Um, so do good and no harm basically is, is our mission. Um, and um, throughout this journey of actually um, working with this talented collective members, um, I've had a chance to be able to guide them through. Uh, Sandra, I'm going to meet you really quick. Welcome. Um, guide them through their career and learn a lot along the way too of how to present um, themselves or ourselves to the world as a, a professional designer, 
how to build our network. Obviously, right now we have about 25 of us in our community, in our collective. And so building that network um, and keeping that network, a, a tight knit network has always been good for us and is something that we aspire to do. So that is why I'm here. I think it's super important to be able to present ourselves well. Uh, as well as um, to be able to uh, make connection, meaningful connection with other people, right? So if you're interested in, in what this collective is and what is the work that we do, um, yeah, just Google Taylor Collective, it'll come up, hopefully. So, great. So um, why we are here today? Um, we are here because again, I um, have been you know, very much involved in uh, mentoring, teaching, um, uh, emerging designers coming into the field, which um, is the audience for this conversation. You know, maybe you're you're uh, new to design, or you're a career transitioner, or or maybe you've taken a break and you're now entering the the design field again. Um, what be, besides what career service? people who are telling you, right? Like have a resume and have a portfolio. What are the tips? What are, um, what, what should you be doing? And what are the managers and the hiring managers are looking for? Um, as a collective, as a company, we are hiring, we're talking to a lot of people every week um, to scan at candidates. So my perspective would be coming from someone who's vetting and hiring for positions. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to go through a little caveat, a um, little fun nuggets there at the beginning. Um, we'll talk through the designer profile. We'll do, uh, we'll talk through some of the, the networking tools and platform. Uh, but really, I think where uh, I'm most excited is this AMA session at the bottom, right? Um, I've been in this field for uh, like 15 years. What can I do to, to help you? Um, what kind of question do you have? Um, I'm hoping that it will be a, a more interactive um, session at the end. So want to save um, ample time for that. Sounds good? All right, give me a thumbs up icon things if you're, if you're interacting, if you're there. All right. Cool. So a little caveat, uh, my perspective and um, the field that I am in is in UX design, um, user experience design, right? Um, though I have, um, I've studied, um, Nadim, to, to your field, I've studied graphic design. I've started out as a graphic designer. Um, but my work mainly has been in the realm of product design, digital design. Um, I work a lot with uh, other type of design, like or, you know, interior designer, architecture, um, not to name all, all the type of design, product designers, uh, physical product packaging, right? Um, so I believe that these uh, principles and tips hopefully will still carry forward for the other types of designers. But uh, just a caveat that this is my point of view, um, and this is the kind of hiring mentality that I'm bringing to the table, which is from a digital product UX designer point of view. Um, so hopefully that uh, is helpful and is still somewhat relevant to what you're um, looking to, to learn. Um, again, if you have any questions, pop them in the chat. Cool. So let's talk about the, about the design profile. Um, a professional designer profile, um, what, what are the components of that? So in my mind, when I go and I look at, you know, a um, hundred application, uh, this and the size of these circles are the emphasis in which I give to uh, each application. So a great portfolio. Um, and then I go to LinkedIn profile, um, and then I would go to their interest and cause. And I'll tell you why in each of those. Um, in this proportion, right? Um, the fact of the matter is if we have a good design portfolio, nothing else matter, honestly. Um, 
not where you go to school, not whom you've worked with, um, not the kind of experience that you've done. If you have a portfolio that you can articulate um, online, that the the work should should speak for itself, right? So, in looking at a portfolio, uh, and again, I have to look at you know thirty to forty portfolios in one sitting. Um, and that sitting would be an hour of my, you know, one hour gap in my time. So it's very quickly um, look at the portfolio, scroll through, you know, what the question becomes, what are the bits that that a hiring manager such as myself would be looking for in a portfolio? So these are four points. And again, I'm, I'm trying to make this presentation very tactical and very practical. So if you have any questions um, beyond that, let me know. I don't want to really go into what, what I'm not going into is for every project, you need to have this sections, right? Because I think those are pretty standard and also very specific to each industry. These principles on the left side here, however, I believe are, uh, universal and, um, quite, um, crucial for, uh, any industry or any type of design, right? So domain expertise. Um, so whether you're in interior, interior, de interior design or UX design or et cetera, um, you can still, you need to be able to show, do you know the process and do you know what you're talking about? Um, yeah, Avina, I hope I pronounced your name right. Uh, do you have a question? Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, I'm audible to you. I'm sorry, can you repeat the question? Uh, I'm just saying, am I audible to you clearly? Oh, uh, you are not be able to hear me clearly? Yeah, I, yeah, I am able to uh, hear you clearly. Am I audible to you? Yes, yes, great. Um, if you okay. have any questions, feel free to tap in the chat, right? Okay, okay, thank you. Awesome, yeah, good to see you here. Awesome. So domain expertise, right? And that is uh, for, a, for a digital product person that is showing every step of the process that is being able to say, you know, uh, this is the problem that we're trying to solve, right? Um, there are key components for each of the design disciplines that need to um, have in your co core portfolio. So make sure that you go out there and look at the, the kind of designer that you love. And honestly, the best way to do it is to replicate the structure of their projects um, and, and how they're structuring their project. So um, after enough, have the uh, question of every time I show my project to hiring manager, the, they say my project is very linear. So what does that mean? So yeah, so, uh, that could be a couple of things. Um, uh, my experience tell me, yeah, that there's no story exactly. So my experience is telling me that, you know, it's, it's very, um, it's almost like cut and dry. Like, this is what I do at every step of the way. Um, very process, um, step by step driven without as much of the story behind. Instead, it could be you know, this is the kind of problem that I'm trying to solve, uh, almost like a hero journey. If anybody have um, learned about hero's journey, right? You always started out with a lot of um, hope, right? Like a, a heckless uh, embark on the, on the journey to reach the top of the Mount Olympus, right? Uh, heckless embark out, go through this design process, heckless, um, it was met with a lot of challenges. So there's some obstacle that that design process need to solve for. And then through a lot of determination and testing and a lot of work, you know, finally heckless in this case yourself, got over the obstacle and was able to achieve this amazing result at the end, right? So that is the story that you can tell with your project. Um, how do you make a portfolio in a DMAS? So uh, that is a, a, a good question. So a, a portfolio, um, there's a lot of different sites that um, 
that it's an easy start for a designer to make a portfolio. Uh, as a matter of fact, let's tap into our collective power. If you can type in the kind of uh, site or the kind of web services that you are using to make your portfolio, um, that will be helpful for Nadine. Um, Behance, Drupal, Squarespace um, are all good examples of um, of portfolio template and site. Yeah, Susanna have her or theirs on on Wix um, as well. So um, I think that is uh, helpful. Yeah, type type in the chat and and help Nadim out. So that's the first thing, right? Do these people know? Um, their domain expertise? Do they know what they're talking about? The second point is, can they iterate or can they explain their process clearly, right? And are they doing it linearly, linearly like what uh, Apinap is saying, or do they have a process where they take feedback either from the stakeholders, from the user, and return back to the process to show I'm sorry, my, if you can hear my neighbor dog, um, that's the chorus in the background. Um, can they go back to the process and say, I receive feedback and I'm making revisions on the um, projects uh, and here's what uh, the final, final quote unquote um, result is, right? A project is never final, um, but it's very good to show that there is some um, feedback loop happening, right? The third point that is so crucial for any designers is attention to detail. So I'm so sorry. <laughs> if you're, um, can you guys still hear me? You all can you hear me still? Yes, okay, thank you, Sandra. Um, so if your site is not accessible, right? If there is not like a security um, SSL certificate, um, if there are typos, if there are alignment issues, those are all no-nos. Don't do that, right? Um, so get get someone to review your portfolio and make sure that it's solid, right? Um, and then the fourth piece, which I think a lot of people don't think about as much, is show collaboration, right? Even if you work on this, especially if you work on this project alone, you can still collaborate with your user, with your stakeholders, right? Um, especially true if you work with teams, you have to give credits to people. That is so important, right? So um, Susanna, thank you, Christina and Sandra sharing Webflow, Wix, yeah, all very good. Um, site to host um, your portfolio. So Susanna was talking about, heard, heard a lot of uh, designer who have portfolio on site like Behance or Dribble, um, and they prefer their own website. I'm gonna use the word they for everybody just to be inclusive, I hope that's okay. Um, and then we'll be interested to know from a hiring manager point of view, what is preferred. Um, so, I, whenever I go to uh, Behance or Dribble, I immediately think that this is more of a UI designer. I think those platforms are very much um, templated and, and very good for showcasing visual work um, for a, let's say something that, some position that needs more explanation or customized layout, um, such as the case of maybe, um, UX designer, researcher, um, architect, you know, um, that needs more explaining and text. Um, I think a personal website uh, is always um, leave more room to play and therefore I have a higher affinity for um, someone who's on the personal website or like own website route. I hope that is helpful. So yeah, so that's portfolio, right? Like taking a look at everything that uh, we um, have talked about here. And if you already have a portfolio, I would encourage that you go through and make sure, you know, these four points are addressed on every single project that you have on your portfolio. If you have questions on portfolio, put it in the chat. Let's keep going, okay?
All right. LinkedIn. So LinkedIn is, in my opinion, the best um, social network for job seekers these days. And it's also replacing um, resume. I do not look at resumes these days. Um, even if the resume is on your site, I immediately just go to LinkedIn. Uh, first of all, because I can't, there's much more information and more real time information that I can get from LinkedIn than I would be able to get on, on the resume. So if I can give an, an advice, I think half a resume, um, a, a paper or, you know, a PDF, sorry, a resume in the pocket so that you can send to recruiter and, and the like is helpful. But is a must to include your LinkedIn on your portfolio um, and to tailor your LinkedIn in a way that is very impactful. And here are the few tips for that. Make it very clear who you are about in your summary and your description, right? Um, what is, as a matter of fact, I'm going to um, go through this point and I'm going to pull up my LinkedIn, maybe that's helpful because it's gonna be a lot more relevant, right? So be very clear about who you are upfront. Um, experience, what kind of relevant experience that you've had and what kind of impact you have been able to do. So things like I have helped, you know, if you're a marketing designer, uh, I've helped this company increase their engagement by 5% in the last, you know, six months or in the six months that I've worked with them, right? Try to uh, almost like quantify um, your impact on the role. Engagement is helpful in um, seeing that, oh, this person is, um, is, you know, very, is basically in love with what they're doing. Therefore, they spend time, um, more time than what they need to to engage with different design content, to participate in discussion. So let's, let's talk about that. Let's talk about what that looks like. Um, engagement could be anything from like liking posts on LinkedIn or, um, you know, posting something that you read, right? Um, try to keep it professional, uh, but try to be consistent. So what I do every, every week, and I kid you not, you know, I am, I've, I've spent 15 years in this business and I still try to schedule my LinkedIn every week, right? So every week I would have an hour on Wednesday that I block off for LinkedIn content. And um, that could be something that I read that I saved for that day. Um, that could be scrolling through the feed and liking other people's posts. That is a way for us to connect with people, right? And to build that network as well. So that's good. Uh, continuous education is very important. I don't think people think about this as much. A lot of people go through, you know, design um, school or they learn by themselves. Um, so there's some formal education there, but more importantly is, at least for me as a hiring manager, it's very important to see if this person um, love what they do enough that they would go and learn something new or try to keep learning something new. So even if you learn a course in Coursera, at Coursera or Udemy or whatever that is, to be able to show I've done this certificate and work on this, right? It shows that there's initiative and it shows that there are um, passion in what you do, right? And then recommendation, um, if, if you have this, that's great. If you don't, that's okay. You will get it as you progress in your career. But for every good relationship that you have with someone that you've worked with, add in, ask them to, to write a recommendation for you, right? And a lot of time you can pre-write or pre-written the recommendation and just get them to copy and paste, which is super low effort on their end. So looking back from like, professor or coworker from other job, even if not design related, right? 
start building up your recommendation um, engine. So let's see, um, let's look at this really quickly because I know this can be a lot of words on the page and let's make this a little bit more tangible. Um, any question, just put it in the chat, okay? This is like the best day to have a workshop because dogs are barking and, you know, leaves blowers are blowing, it's great. Um, so this is my profile. This is what I um, focus on uh, up front. Um, remember when we were talking about summary and um, keeping very tight what you're about, right? Um, sorry, I need to switch position one minute. Uh, Sandra is asking, do you have any recommendation on how uh, someone can effectively showcase their relevant experience if they're just transitioning into the field. Yeah, that is a great question. Let's talk about that. Hang on, give me one minute, please. Okay, sorry, I just have people in the background doing yard work and now I'm at this weird looking chair. Um, so yeah, so let's talk about that um, in a little bit, Sandra, when we get to that, that section, um, that's okay. So yeah, up, up front, right, a summary of who you are, very short, very sweet up front, as well as this area right about here. Um, in the first three sentences, you need to be able to describe what it is that you do, what is it that you're passionate about, right? The second part has been, um, so that's the part about summary. The second part is about um, engagement, right? So look at this dashboard, which you should have on every one of your LinkedIn. Um, number of view, number of post views, number of search, that's all the result of the kind of content that you put out. So in my activity, you'll start seeing that I'm, I share different content, right? I comment on different uh, posts. Um, I author different posts. I'm on different panels. I know these are the things that you will accumulate as you progress in your career. Um, so it's not always uh, easy to be like, oh, I'm not on a panel. How do I do that too? But there are things, easy things that you can still do, such as liking posts, such as commenting on people's posts. If only you take the time of your day to do that, right? Um, so let's go talk about um, uh, positions and, and how to make that relevant uh, experience. Um, Sandra, um, I know about you, so I know that you're interested in, uh, I believe, product design. Um, really depending on the kind of experience that you've had in the past, right? So um, it can be something like I've worked in the, um, let's just say, I, I used to be a waitress for one of my positions when I was in college. How do I make that to be about design, right? And then, okay. Sorry. Hang on. <laughs> um, can you guys still hear me? I'm sorry. It's not a good day for a workshop. Okay, I'm back. I'm so sorry. There's like people in my house working on things. So hopefully this is better. Um, so am I, uh, am I saying things? Can you hear me clearly? Yeah, I apologize. Um, so if I'm a waitress and I am, 
have done that in the past, or I'm a sale person, or I'm a marketing person. Um, right. So uh, very much about tailoring, I guess, um, and finding the kind of experience in that position that would be relevant to uh, the position that you want. So take the example of Sandra, who's interested in product design, right? Digital product design. Being a um, sales representative, for example, somebody who have experience with sales, uh, to be able to say, you know, I understand customer requirements and needs, and I understand, you know, how to convince um, customers to um, guide them towards solving their problem, right? Um, it sounds like a lot of BS, um, but it's true. Um, every position that you have in the past will give you something invaluable that you can then take to your next position. Um, I've worked a lot with people who transition their career. Um, I've taught at boot camps, right? And a lot of them are um, are exactly May. So uh, May is saying that soft skills are being emphasized in a lot of company. Um, when Taylor Root Collective hire um, for position, we actually put more emphasize, emphasis on soft skills um, and business skills because we are a consultant, right? We need to be able to manage um, client and manage project and be able to present and you know, take curveballs, feedback, uh, and be able to gracefully answer, right? So um, I tell everybody that their experience in the field, in other fields is actually um, as valuable, if not more valuable than their design experience because it allows them to um, work with more types of clients and industry. Cool. So uh, moving on um, very quickly, right? Um, certifications and continuous learning, right? I learned this in 2020. I had that in um, license uh, and certification, your volunteer, you've all know this. And let, let's go to recommendation, right? Like I said, even if it's someone who, you know, did not work with you in design, reach out to an old professor, reach out to an old manager from your previous job and maybe write the recommendation ahead of time and say, hey, so-and-so, um, I'm looking to build my career and I really respect you. Would you be open to giving me a recommendation? I've taken the liberty to draft something very quickly. Here you go. What do you think, right? Um, so that is something that if you if they say no to that, um, it's okay, then you move on to the next person, okay? Cool, all right, let's keep on going. Any question, any other question, let me know. Um, <laughs> Abhijah, thank you so much uh, for your patience. I'm trying to escape the background sound, but hopefully this is a little bit better. Um, yeah. Uh, I'm happy to follow up with you for like reviewing projects or we have you know, people in our collective that hopefully can help, can help with that. So feel free to reach out. Cool, so we've talked about portfolio, we talk about LinkedIn profile. Uh, let's talk about interest and causes. Um, this is your passion, right? What do you care about? Um, I highlight this because it's very important for our collective or for the work that I do, that I understand what makes people tick. Um, I truly believe that um, if we're passionate about something, we tend to do better work. So interest and causes might be things like, I really care about sustainability, or I really care about um, uh, diversity and inclusion, or I really care about my you know, LGBTQ plus community, right? Um, it's the audacity and the passion to put that up front and to seek the kind of work specifically in that space. So that could be in your portfolio, that could be your in your LinkedIn profile, but I would encourage you to not be a generic designer, 
whichever field that you're in, do not be a generic designer. Do not say when hiring manager asks you, so what do you do in your free time or what do you what do you want to work on? What kind of industry, what kind of cause, um, what do you care about? Do you not say, I'm a young designer or I'm a new designer. I can, I'm excited about everything. Sure, a lot of people will say that that will broaden your choices. For me, for us and where the world is moving, uh, having a stand, having an opinion, having something, values that you care about, in my opinion, um, make you a stronger candidate, right? Um, it show that you have values. It show that you have, um, you know, a, a, a focus, um, and it shows that you willing you're willing to work hard to um, to achieve that goal, right? So, um, for my profile, um, and hopefully it comes through. I, I want to do humanity driven work and I only want to do humanity driven work, right? I want to, I'm very passionate about sustainability and craftsmanship. And those are the two areas that I am I'm focusing my time and my talent in. Um, and I, I will go as far as saying to my clients that um, if, if you are in, you know, um, oil and gas, uh, or if you are, you know, in, um, industry that are, are bad for the environment, we're probably not a good fit, right? Um, I understand that it is a privileged position. There will be time when you need to take on the kind of project, maybe you're freelancing or taking a position that you might not um, be as passionate about to make a living. I've done it before, but the earlier you can, um, really embrace what truly matter to you, the better it will be because then you accumulate experience in that field over time, right? And then the more you work, the more likely you're gonna be able to get more work in that field, right? And wouldn't that be amazing to be able to say, I love travel and I want to work in travel or like, you know, we start up with company that has to do with traveling and to do more of that. That would be amazing. So start accumulating your interests, start defining them and start putting them on your portfolio, LinkedIn, um, live that value. Make sense? Awesome, cool. Um, so we are at 40. I wanna kind of just touch very quickly on the network side and uh, open up room for questions as well. Um, so prepare your questions. Here I am, I'm here to help you. Um, so let me know. So when we ask designers, um, what is the number one way to get new jobs? Everybody say, I need, I need access to people and they are right, right? I need access to mentors, to, um, to communities. I need access to people in companies that would help me. So there are really three ways that you could expand your network. Um, and I am only focusing on virtual ways because I think, you know, we are an international audience here. Um, and with the pandemic, honestly, virtual is a way to go. So um, I'm not counting, you know, the meetups of the world and the meeting in person in your local community. I think that's super important, but it's not at scale um, right now. So three ways virtual that you can expand your network. Um, the first one is through through meeting platforms. So things like ADP list, uh, amazing designer, uh, amazing design people list. Um, if anyone have um, joined that before, it's a, a network of mentors, design mentors in many different fields that you can get match up and, um, and uh, be mentored, right? Um, I'm on there, uh, a lot of people, good designers on, uh, on there. Uh, the key there is to be consistent and be very clear with what you need help with, right? Uh, Lunch Club, this right here, is uh, another meeting platform that I found very helpful for designers. Um, is a little bit broader in terms of focus, meaning it's not only designers on that platform, there are product managers, there are engineers, there are startup founders, 
Um, but because of that, you get access to uh, a lot more um, real practitioners that have their network um, brought in for you. So you're not only playing with designers, you're also playing with decision makers uh, in different companies. I think the, the great thing about Lunch Club is that, um, well, obviously it's free, but it's also you can make a, make a commitment. Like I only want to meet twice a week this day or once a week. Um, and the people are super open and they have very low barrier to, to conversations. Um, my advice or tips for that is come to that conversation with, um, with almost like without an agenda, right? It's very off-putting to come to a conversation and say, I'm looking for a job right now and I just need you to give me a job versus saying, you know, do your homework ahead of time and say, hey, uh, I'm interested in what you do. Uh, I want to enter that field and I want to learn more. Can we talk, right? And um, lunch cup is the right way. Right, so one, that's one vertical, which is meeting platforms. I would encourage you all to join if you haven't and um, check it out. The second one are uh, Slack groups and I, you've, you've seen this before, I'm sure. Um, there are a lot of Slack groups out there. Um, I would encourage you to get very specific. So um, I'm, I'm part of a couple uh, Slack groups um, for, for startup founders, for female startup founders. Um, a lot of my, um, our collective members are, are part of um, Slack groups that are very specific to what they, they value and, and they care about. So there are a uh, queer design club. I'm gonna just type in some, um, some in here. There's queer design club, there are um, black UX labs, there are, you know, a um, bunch of founders. Um, there, there are so many Slack groups, but what I want you to think about is, um, you know, who do you, and what do you identify with? Um, and, and start from there so that you don't get overwhelmed um, so that you can participate because you can have 10, 20 Slack group. It wouldn't matter unless you participate. So choose one to three Slack group that you feel like you can have time for and just monitoring, right? Um, the good thing is that you can be anywhere in the world and still join this group and, and meet people, right? And then again, the third piece, again, coming back to LinkedIn, honestly, if you are an emerging designer, spend a lot of time on LinkedIn. That's where you're gonna spend, you know, meet people just by commenting or liking a post from a design leader, for example, that design leader will notice you. And the next time that you reach out and say, hey, I like the work that you do. Can we link up? Can we, you know, um, connect? Can we hop on the call? They would be much more susceptible to do that. Cool. So networking um, takes time. It, um, it's worth doing though, it's fun. If you truly love design, you would, you would find very interesting people in the design world. Okay, um, I'll pause really quick because I feel like I've just uh, screamed through that leaf blower um, just now. Um, what kind of questions that you all have for me or for us this point. Um, I'm gonna just stop sharing for a minute and just use this time as an AMA. Um, so you know what I do, you know, you know the kind of collective that I run. Um, what can I do to help you all? Or what kind of question that you've been burning to ask? Free advice. My chat, yeah. Thanks for joining. Um, of all of us here on the call, um, what are your goals in the next year in your design field? Mm -hmm. 
type in the chat or speak aloud. What would you like to accomplish in the next year? Avinad is talking about how should I do some specific, how to show that I do some specific thing, like to show my specific skills. Um, so the question, uh, as I understand it, is how to showcase that you have a specialized skill. So let's just say I do um, React Interactive or I do animation. Um, do the work, right? If you don't have the project yet, make up a project. Your portfolio your, is your best friend and it's a way that you know anywhere, anyone in the world can look at your portfolio and say, oh, okay, I get it. Um, Susanna have a question around, um, you know, how big should a portfolio be? Um, 10 to 25, um, get consistent design work, illustration, learn about UX and uh, animation. Um, so I will say, uh, sorry, I will say no more than 10. I think the, the moment that it is um, more than 10 project is started to get very diluted. So choose your top 10. Okay, um, I'm going to post my LinkedIn um, onto here and feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn. Um, I'm happy to connect with you all. If, I, if there's anything that I can do to help you, obviously reach out. Uh, okay, Meili and Sandra has, um, has the question. So Meili is currently finishing up a UI animation course um is it a great specialization to have in the current design field uh yes anything that has to do with interaction moving uh images um anything that complements really your core skills is very helpful um so yes sandra is asking um uh, that they are not currently working on a project um, should they include hackathon or daily challenges in portfolio? Absolutely. Anything that you can show um, that you're continuously learning and doing work that show passion and that show skills, by all means, right? Um, I am more uh, interested in someone who's continuously learning than someone who is great but kind of stagnant. So over it. Susanna, thank you so much for joining. Um, thank you for being here. Um, all right, everyone. Uh, I, I have loved uh, meeting you all. Please connect. Um, I'm sorry again for the background noise. It's, uh, it's an unplanned distraction, but um, I would love to connect with all of you and looking to see you in next uh, sessions. Uh, hopefully this was helpful um, again very practical tips on um, things that you can do to improve your professional profile and starting to, um, you know, community that you should be a part of to broaden your network. So um, yeah, please um, try them out and um, connect with me and see, see how it goes. But uh, thank you for taking the time, okay? Yeah, thank you all. Thank you for joining. Have a good rest of your day. Yes, Chenna.
please do. Please connect. Yep, I've been up and up. Thanks for joining. Okay, have a good day, everyone. Go for it.